on an amendment to require blasting. That's incorrect. I wanted to note that there be no blasting added to the plans. Okay, so that would just make that consistent with then the amendment that was proposed. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the minutes? Read to do some video too. Yes, and that was a note that was added to the. Okay, but it's not in the minutes. You certainly can add it to the minutes if you like. It, it is on the plans. Okay, as long as some plan does Okay. My understanding is it's on the plan, so I, I don't think we need to amend the minutes then. <laughs> Anything else? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. You know, uh, Barbara has made a motion to approve the minutes, and Jack has seconded them. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, just briefly describe the correspondence we've received. Uh, there is a memo to the town council regarding the comprehensive plan appointees. We've also received a copy of the planning commissioner's journal from the spring of 2005. Uh, tonight we have received a letter dated April 25th, 2005 from Christopher and Jane Bullis regarding the uh, request of Deb and Steve Riccio on the Blueberry Ridge subdivision. We also have a memorandum uh, from Bruce Smith to the town planner uh, related to the Inn by the Sea. And then we also have a letter from the Department of Health and Human Services regarding uh, the Inn by the Sea. Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight is a consent agenda item uh, regarding the Cape Elizabeth Common Site Plan Extension. Paul Woods of ISIS Development LLC is requesting a one-year extension of the site plan approval granted for the Cape Elizabeth Commons multi-use building proposed for 316 Ocean House Road. Uh, and my understanding is this is a consent agenda item, so unless any member of the board feels that we need to have a, uh, a public hearing and comment, we would uh, proceed without a hearing or, frankly, any comments from the applicant at this time. Uh, does anybody have any issues regarding this proceeding as a consent agenda item? My understanding is he simply wants to extend the period. Uh, is it by one year? One year. Do we have any a motion then? David. A motion. Motion for the board to consider being based, uh, be it ordered that based on the information presented, the original site plan approval for Cape Elizabeth Commons, a retail office residential building proposed for the construction at 316 Ocean House Road be extended to April 28, 2000. That would be 2006, wouldn't it? That's correct. Second. A motion was made by David and seconded by Jack. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. One down. Under. Under old business. Uh, Deb and Steve, I hope I don't mispronounce your name. Riccio. Riccio, thank you. Are requesting an amendment to the building envelope for lot seven in the Blueberry Ridge subdivision to increase the size of the lot. Uh, the application will be reviewed this evening for compliance with section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivisions. And I would ask the applicant to step forward to the microphone and describe the proposed change. As you stated, my husband and I have purchased lot seven in Blueberry Ridge and would like to decrease a side setback from 20 to 15 feet, which is in compliance with the zoning of that subdivision and makes it consistent with many of the other lots in the subdivision. We only have one boundary that can be considered a side because it is a corner lot. It's the side that abuts um, the Bolas's property. With concerns raised by the boluses, we have agreed that there are some plantings that we, specifically that we would do, and I included them. Um, I think you all 
got a picture of the lot. We'd be, redu we'd be gaining five feet of building envelope here, which would push us, push us five feet closer to the Bolus's property and put in five plantings um, along that boundary. And I'm sorry, before you begin, I didn't ask you to identify yourself. Could you just oh, do that for the record, please? Debbie Riccio. Thank sorry. <laughs> uh, this has been advertised for a public hearing this evening, so at this point I would just ask you to sit down and I'll open uh, this matter up for a public hearing. Any member who would, wishes to come forward to speak is welcome to do so at this time. <clears throat> My name is David Sawyer, 10 Charlotte Street, South Portland. <clears throat> I'm in a butter to the uh, First Osher development. And uh, I've, I just have a question, and then I'd also like to speak in favor of the proposal on the table. The question is uh, about elevation. It's a little bit off the subject, but I thought maybe I, if you would allow me to ask, I could just ask the question. Uh, it seems to me that the, uh, el the, the height of the, elevate of the uh, cul-de-sac and the development is a, seems a few feet higher than what I had read from the plans. Uh, from what I read on the plan, the cul-de-sac and so forth was supposed to be at an elevation of 82 feet. And it seems like they're about 84 feet. So I, I wonder if the board could look into that at some point. <clears throat> uh, and then... Go ahead. I'm just asking. I mean, it would seem to me that that would be an issue that could be taken up through the town planner um, outside of this hearing process. We certainly okay. would that make sense, Maureen? Okay. So we'd be happy to look into it. Yeah. Good. And then also I'd like to speak in favor of this proposal. I, I was a little reluctant before about this open space business, but now that I see what's there where, it's, where everything has just been obliterated and cleaned out in that subdivision, I kind of like the idea. I mean, all this, uh, all this effort at, to, to preserve vegetation and preserve trees. I think, uh, I think the board. I would like to compliment the board on, on not, not uh, following through and preserving these trees. I mean, it's, all this shade is overrated. I mean, the stately three-foot oak trees. Who needs them? I mean, I really like this open space idea, and. You know, cramming the houses together, being able to look right through your window and see right into somebody else's bedroom, I think is a good idea. So I've warmed up to this whole idea of cramming everything in. And, you know, I look around my neighborhood, which was built in the 50s and has similar size lots to the Fristashi lots. And at that time, they, they were able to save different trees. And you go through my neighborhood and there's all these trees. But it's just a lot of work for all those people that... You know, I see them out working, and so I'm glad that there aren't any trees in the new development. You're not putting, making people have to rake leaves and put up with all that shade. So I think it's a really good thing the planning board has done going down this route towards open space. And then the other thing I'd like to compliment the board on is uh, not letting the ordinances get in, get in the way of good planning and development. I mean, um, the uh, subdivision was originally uh, designed was against your ordinance. So, so what? Change the ordinance. <laughs> and who needs public hearings? <laughs> we didn't have one for the final hearing for Pope for, for Stasi. So, you know, that's, let's look ahead. Let's plan. Let's, let's use this open space. Let's go ahead. Let's, let's preserve all these, uh, these uh, new notions. Let's get rid of the old idea of preserving trees and giving people a little privacy and and really being a nation of laws. I mean, who, who needs the rules? Who needs public hearings? Let's just go ahead. And so I'm saying, yeah, give them their five feet and push those houses right together. Is there anybody else who would wish to speak at the public hearing tonight? Okay, then I will now close the public hearing. Uh, at this point, I would invite any of the board members that they would like to ask the applicant any further questions or if there are any comments. Mr. Chair, yep. um, to the applicants, the, the proposed plantings, have those been done uh, with, in, in consultation with the abutters or have those just been ones that you have proposed? Uh, excuse me, would you mind coming back to the microphone to answer the question?
Yes, Mr. Bolas and I met together actually on the lot and kind of looked at where we needed to fill in. There actually are three very large deciduous trees, kind of 17 and then 24 feet apart, and then there's some lower undergrowth that, that is when you get down to the back lots. So we sort of concentrated on the more empty spaces and filling some things in. And I went to Skillings because it was the north side and those trees are going to create some shade when there's leaves on them um, to find out exactly what would, you know, what would grow if there was a lot of shade there. Because not having seen it with leaves on the trees yet. Um, so I think between Skillings and I and, and Chris and I kind of looking at where they need to go, we've got things that will, you know, fill in um, a buffer. Okay. Barbara. Have you identified the size of the trees that you're planning on putting in there? When I went to Skillings, I, I, think, I think the ones that they have in stock or may be able to get for me again in August, um, which might be the time we'd probably be ready to put something in, are four to five. I think the Abravites are around four to five feet. And I think the viburnums, uh, so I'm not sure how wide they are at that point. And the viburnums, I think they were right about the same height. Would you? Would it be any hardship for you if that were identified as part of the agreement that there be no plantings less than four feet? Because sometimes that can create real problems if they're not identified. I don't mean that, um, that every Only in that if I can't get them, I mean, come August is the end of season. It's going to be somewhat determined by what I can get. And I don't want to have to pay for full grown ones. But yeah, I think the ones we were talking about were in the three to five feet range between the two bushes, the two, st uh, the viburnum and the, um, but it seems to me that, because I was thinking in my head, they, they, they were down near as tall as me, which would be good to start out with. Well, I'd recommend that we put some kind of a, a height designation, if, if you wouldn't mind in there. A three to five would be fine. I mean, if that's what you and he agreed to. It's just that I've seen some problems with this in the past. Yeah, I'm not going to go not, get one foot. No, I no. I understand, but you know, if that. it's in writing, then yes. there's no question. He's happy, you're happy, and everybody knows what we're talking about. So if that would be something we could, I mean, we could make it three to five, as, as far as I'm concerned. It's okay, and I, this may be a little out of order, but it's three to five feet. Do you think that's acceptable to the abutter? Or do you... uh, uh, that would be fine. Okay, the butter has indicated that that would be acceptable from his. <coughs> well, since, since the butter has, has agreed to everything, I think we could have a... Yeah, is there any more comment? Otherwise, I'd ask for a motion for the board to consider. Does the chairman have a motion? Okay, Jack. Um, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts discussed, the application of Deb and Steve Riccio for an amendment to the building envelope for Lot 7, E34-17-7 of the previously approved Blueberry Ridge subdivision located off Mitchell Road be approved subject to the condition that the plantings in the buffer be a minimum of 3 to 5 feet. A motion has been made by Jack. Is there a second? Uh, David Griffin is seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, thank you. Uh, under new business on the agenda, the Inn by the Sea is requesting amendments to the previously approved site plan located at 40 Bowery Beach Road to add four additional rooms to the existing building footprint, expand the port to share, revise the lobby expansion, and add office space. Section 19-9-6, site plan completeness and public hearing. 
in Section 19-5-5, parentheses D, Conditional Use Review. At this point, I would ask the applicant to come forward and uh, introduce the project. Yes, hi. <clears throat> My name is Greg Schenberg. I'm a project manager for Olympia Equity. We were hired by HMH Limited Partnership to present the application for the uh, new proposal for the end by the sea. Uh, Scott Keyes is here, the architectural firm from TF, uh, TFH Architectural Firm. Maureen McQuaid, the innkeeper, is here. And uh, I'll let Scott pretty much explain the project. And uh, if you have some questions, we'll try to do our best to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, as always, it's a pleasure to be in front of you. Uh, this was not an anticipated meeting. Um, however, um, when we presented the plans and the site plan and elevation to you uh, a number of months ago, our anticipation was that we'd be able to break ground in the fall, and there was some urgency behind it. Um, we were well along with the planning process. Um, however, when the decision was made to postpone until um, until the spring, uh, I'm sorry, fall of next year we had a chance to step back and take a hard look at the project a second time, if you will. During that process, we discovered that there were certain amenities that we thought would enhance the overall project. Um, it was a combination of uh, a design team uh, discovering some potential additional suites. Uh, the, uh, the, the owner also suggested some possibilities. So we're here before you to talk about not an appreciably larger project, but one of a slightly different um, uh, scale in terms of, um, not in terms of building, but in terms of program. And I'd like to outline this for you if I may. Um, the approval we received was for 11 additional suites. And we're here this evening to request an additional four suites, in other words, 15. Uh, those came about by finding additional spaces in the existing inn, um, changing the offices, uh, actually changing office or two, into, uh, into suites. Plus, uh, reworking the configuration of the uh, suites within the uh, proposed room itself. Interestingly enough, the overall footprint of the project was actually reduced in, in area. In other words, we're, we're, we're expanding across the surface of the lot uh, with fewer square feet. The overall square footage of the project, however, is slightly more. It happens on the upper floors. <clears throat> with the additional suite, of course, came the need for additional parking. So we have increased the parking count um, by uh, 19, the 19 additional spaces. Uh, we had 13 originally approved by reworking the site plan. Um, you can see outlined here in yellow where we have picked up those additional six spaces. The um, meeting room uh, that we proposed was somewhat less um, the first time around. It was about, um, I think, 11, 1,100, almost 1,200 square feet. We're now 1,500 square feet. So with some reconfiguration, we were able to pick up a few hundred square feet in those um, in, the, in the meeting space itself. And the other two components is, as you may recall, an extension of the lobby. So right now, those of you who are familiar with it, uh, you can appreciate that it was reasonably tight quarters to have both circulation and have guests checking in. So that space has been enlarged, and we've pushed um, out in this green area, uh, both in terms of a porch uh, out toward the water, as well as some additional square footage in that lobby space. So there will be a now seating area, as well as circulation, as well as a slightly larger um, counter for um, checking in guests. Also, you'll notice the green area toward uh, Bowery Beach Road. That is an extension of the Port de Cher, the drop-off. Um, we're moving it, uh, in this case, about 17 feet closer to the road. Right now, a single vehicle can enter it. Now we'll be able to bring two vehicles in. 
We've also raised, after discussions with the uh, fire chief and analyzing uh, sizes of emergency vehicles, we've raised it several feet, so now emergency, emergency vehicles can find their way underneath that should, should they need a rise. <coughs> Quickly, the elevations. You can see the dashed line is the original height of the port to share. We've raised it up. We're proposing stone piers as opposed to the wood that presently exists. The front elevation, I think if you compare it side by side, it's very similar to what we presented last time. There's some refinement. Um, we've recognized a need for mechanical um, condenser compressors in the roof. We have depressed them into the roof structure, but there will be a portion that will merge slightly above the second into the roof. So you see that indicated here. Also, the chimney is opposed to the proposed fireplace as well as um, uh, fireplace inside as well as outside. Slightly modif uh, modification of the, of the existing stair tower you can see here. On the water side, The extended porch is in this general area. Um, again, the existing deck will remain as is. This is the addition. You'll see the three gables, which really crown the bulk of the additional space with, um, I failed to mention, the spa in the lower level. So you'll see now windows here, which will bring some natural light down into that lower level. This is the end elevation looking at it um, from, the, from the north. Well, that's a, that's a, a brief summary of what we're proposing. Again, the overall mass and magnitude, I should say the ridge line has increased to two feet. We had it at 38 feet, it is now at 40 feet. It is still below, as you can see from the elevations, it's still below the main gable of the existing building and slightly less than the existing ridge of the wing that moves off to the west. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, at this point, the first issue we need to consider tonight is that of completeness. So I would ask members of the board if there are any issues on this one to raise them. If not, uh, for the board to consider. Barbara. A motion for completeness be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of HMH Limited Partnership for Site Plan Review and Conditional Use Review of an expansion of the Inn by the Sea located at 40 Bowery Beach Road U17-40-39 to add 15 guest rooms, expansion of the port for share, and addition to the lobby and office space be deemed complete. Second. Barbara has made the motion for completeness and Paul has seconded. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, we have also uh, scheduled a public hearing for this evening. So I will now open uh, the meeting for a public hearing. If anyone wishes to speak on this application, please come forward to the podium, and we welcome your comments. Uh, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing. Uh, and uh, ask any board members if they have questions of the applicant at this point. Uh, Jack. I do have a question. Uh, you mentioned that the actual footprint is somewhat smaller than the original plans. Uh, the town engineer's letter mentions that it results in a net increase of 2,121 square feet of impervious surface. And I wasn't sure how to reconcile those two. It's all parking. That, that is correct. We are increasing the parking slightly. Uh, this is the area of the tennis court, you can see that impervious service does get increased. 
but in terms of the actual footprint between the two, it's a few hundred square feet. All, all 2,000 square feet are parking. That's correct. Barbara? The only question I have, because I can't find it, um, there was mention of a, of a hole in the, for parking, and there's no parking in that area, and I can't see where that is on my plans. I, if you like, I, can, I think I can explain it. Yeah. Uh, the original parking scheme had the parking uh, in a semicircular, actually a quarter circle, swinging in this area. We had a parking light fixture, freestanding fixture, uh, located approximately here with the modified, uh, oh, and that parking actually spilled over the setback line, so we had some discussion. So we made some modifications to that, which made it a little more efficient the way we're showing it, but we did not change the lighting. So I believe the city, the engineer, um, saw that and requested, since the light wasn't needed, that it be removed, which we're prepared to do. Oh, fine. Okay. And where is the light on the plans? I'm just curious. Well, it's, it's not on this particular plan. I think it's on the lighting plan, but it's in this general area. Oh, oh. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's at the very the plans that if I could. Yes. The plans that the board has shows a couple of on the far western side of the property. You will see a couple of parking spaces that drop below the 250 foot setback from the RP1 wetlands. The applicant has since revised the plans and pulled that parking out of there, but your plans still show it in it. The half sizes in the package show the correct layout. Yeah, they did. They did add some new ones, but there was a light at the end of the parking lot, so they fixed the parking off the light. So it's either deleted or move it up to where you want. Okay. Any other questions? Paul, oh, Mr. Chair, a couple of questions. Um, you talked about adding a couple of additional feet. Um, the portico, approximately how tall is that? What's the clearance under that? The park to share? Yes. The entryway? Yep. Um, it is now uh, 13 feet clear underneath. I think we had 11 before. Okay. As I was leaving the question, as I was leaving the office, that I know this question is going to come up. Can you tell me exactly what it is? And, and it was less than, I know it's less than 13 was the answer, so. Is, is the idea that you can get a fire truck underneath that? Is, is that well, what Well, I, I don't know if it is, a, if it is the fire tr truck. I think we looked at um, the emergency um, ambulance or the van. That uh, Mr. Schimberg, do, do you think you're able to respond to that question? Uh, about the high report? Yes. Yes, yeah, can I just have the slide for a Sure. I think we started out at 13 and we're now down at 11, 10 to 11 feet. 10 foot 8 on one side because of the existing slope away from the building is a little bit less and then it goes out to 11 feet. So from 10 8 to 11, <coughs> the clear underneath uh, 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 height. Is that an increase over the current state? Yes. Uh, about it's 16 to 17 inches. It's less than 2 feet, yeah. Okay. Paul, do you have another question? I did get it. I did, Mr. Chair. Um, in your details, there is a details for bituminous and for the paving, but there was no interface detail between your pavers and the bituminous surface. I was just curious as to how you will seek to remedy the one of the most common maintenance problems between two different materials. I'm just curious to see if that had been thought through in the details. Uh, we are working uh, with the landscape architect and civil engineer, and we've had uh, numerous discussions about different paving surfaces where one begins, where the other stops. So that's that's a discussion that's ongoing. Okay. But your point is well taken. Okay. And last comment, if I may. Um, it was noted that the groundwa uh, groundwater monitoring wells are going to be reconstructed. I guess I'll ask the question, why? Groundwater monitoring wells be reconstructed. There are existing ground monitoring wa groundwater monitoring wells uh, out in front and they're being reconstructed. Um, I don't usually run into the fact that they're being reconstructed, so that's why I'm asking the question. And that was in Post's report? Uh, the, yeah, they're shown on the plans. Uh, and there's a detail shown on the plans for their reconstruction. Again, I'm 
once they're in, I'm not usually aware of why they generally get reconstructed, so that's why I'm asking the question. So that work was done by Al Frick, who has yep. worked with uh, yep. Maureen McQuaid and, and designed the system. Yeah, and if you can't answer, if you could just do a follow-up, I'm just, I'm just sure, curious I, as to I don't why. know the answer to that question. I'd have to check with the fellow that designed it. Okay. I know that they're currently monitoring, of course, out there. And yep. Yeah, and again, I just I have done sites where, you know, as long as there's nothing wrong with the wells, they usually stay in place. And again, I was just asking why they would generally be reconstructed where there was no activity in that area. Uh, okay, this is, there is not one where we're uh, expanding the parking lot? Right. These, these wells are more, they're essentially in between the inn and the ocean. Yeah, they're, they're out near, near the front of the property or the f property that faces the, fa faces the ocean. They're right as you face the ocean. Okay. Yes, yeah. that is correct. We, we, will, we will look into that and certainly respond to the question. Okay, thank you. That's it for me. Any other comments or questions? Barbara. Just a segue from what Paul said. The port share will allow an emergency vehicle under it now, when it with the yes. additional 16 or 17, because we had quite a lot of discussion about that when we were out of the site. That's correct. And we did meet me with the fire chief and had the discussions and measured, had him actually go out and measure some of the vehicles, so we know that we're covering that. And they were happy with this, the height of it. We actually raised it a little bit higher than what he said the minimum would be. Fine. Thank you. Just as a follow-up to Paul's inquiry, is that something that you feel needs to be somehow incorporated into a condition here? or My only concern, Mr. Chair, is again, generally from my understanding, groundwater wells, unless there's something that has occurred, wouldn't need to be reconstructed. So my question is why, where there is no activity on the site near the groundwater wells, are these being reconstructed? Um, th it, it could be due to extreme age. I have no I have no knowledge of the, of the age of these. Um, but I'm just wondering if there's been something determined, lack of a better term, wrong with the existing ground monitoring wells that's, that's suggesting they are reconstruction. Do you have any knowledge? I know about the wells. They're not that old. I've never heard of them. I, I guess the suggestion I could make to the board is that the applicant has agreed to answer that question and if their answer results in a change in the site plan, then leave it up to staff to bring it back to the board. Seems fair enough. Seems fair. Is that a, sure. yeah. acceptable from your end? Certainly. Okay. At this point, does anyone have a motion? I'll fetch the motion. Hey, Peter. <laughs> I have a motion for the board to consider. Now, the following findings of fact. HMH Limited Partnership is proposing an expansion of In by the Sea located at 40 Barry Beach Road, which requires review under Section 19-9, Site Plan Review, and Conditional Use Review under 19-5-5. Number two, the town engineer has recommended that additional information be added to the plans. Number three, uh, the plans show a light pole in an area that is no longer proposed to be used for parking. Number four, the planning board has previously conducted a review focusing on hosting outside events at the Inn by the Sea in a manner that complies with site plan standards, particularly noise standards, which needs to be incorporated into this approval. Five, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-5-5D additional use standards. Therefore, I move that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of HMH Limited Partnership for Site Plan Review and Conditional Use Review of an expansion of Inn by the Sea located at 40 Bowery Beach Road, uh, town map U17, lots 40 and 39, to add 15 guest rooms, expansion of the portico share, in addition to the lobby and office space be approved subject to the following conditions. The plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated uh, April 20th, 2005, that the light pole at the end of the west parking lot be relocated or eliminated, that all, three, that all of the requirements associated with the hosting of outside events for up to 172 guests be incorporated into this approval, four, 
that there'll be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans and materials have been revised to reflect the above condition and uh, the comments of Mr. Godfrey uh, concerning the groundwater well reconstruction. Um, that once the developer has answered that question, that if the, uh, the town staff feels that it needs our review, that it'll be brought back to the board. A motion has been made. Is there a second? Seconded by Barbara. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No details. <laughs> I believe that is all the business on our agenda tonight. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Seconded by David. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.